to share the wild consciousness ride that I have been on for the last 24 hours, okay? I feel like it might resonate with a lot of people. You know how sometimes you're like so in your 3D human and you're like just caught in the matrix hologram and then other times you're like, I'm the creator of everything, <laughs> okay? So yesterday I was like having some like major doubts about myself. <laughs> it's because I'm putting together this program where I'm going to be teaching people like these higher esoteric level concepts and even though I know I can teach it there's still that stuff you know running in the background of like is it enough am I enough you know like all this like how am I gonna do this like all these things and it and I was like we're gonna stop doing that right now because that is not helping anybody okay where well, you're gonna speak positively and lovely over ourselves and affirm that we are exactly who we're meant to be to teach this thing, okay? And, and just other life stuff coming up, okay? Imposter <laughs> syndrome. And then this person reached out to me and was like, hey, I have some questions for you. And they said, how did you get to your level of consciousness? Like completely unrelated to me going on a spiral yesterday, okay? And they're like, how did you get to this level of consciousness? Because they wanted to know for their own journey. They said, you seem relatively young. How did you figure all of these things out and connect them to one another? And I was like, oh, you know what? Let me think about that. And I, cause I, wanted, cause I was like, this is a good practice for me because sometimes you forget how much you've grown and evolved. And sometimes it's really good for you to sit down and write out your life story so you can see the growth and the evolution. And it really gives you a, a huge confidence boost. And so I was typing back and I was like, okay, <laughs> um, and this will give you a little bit more background on me too. So I said for my human side, okay, I uh, went to get a background in psychology. I was going to be a clinical psychologist, but we pivoted before I went to go get my master's. Uh, and then I worked in the mental health field for a while. So that helped me understand like the human psyche and working with your subconscious. And then I was a program manager at a nonprofit uh, for uh, underprivileged youth. And I learned how to run groups through that program and it was a huge leadership role. I also owned a doggy daycare for seven years and that helped me with the business side of things and also leadership. Uh, and then I had my spiritual awake or my pre-awakening like in between that time in 2015 and then my big one in 2017. And that's when I had my huge dark night of the soul. <laughs> and I started getting into energy healing and I learned how to heal myself, like my anxiety and depression and eating disorder and body dysmorphia and narcissistic relationships I was in, like learned how to work through all those things. And then I started learning about the Akashic Records and I realized I had always been an Akashic Record reader. I only understood that in this incarnation. Okay. I was like, oh, I've, I've been accessing this because I've always been helping people on deep levels like with soul healing I just wasn't consciously aware of it but then when I started learning more about the Akashic Records is when everything kind of really took off because now I was consciously doing it and I said I studied thousands and thousands of hours worth of esoteric information like how to reprogram your subconscious, how to heal your central nervous system, how to heal your four energy bodies. I learned about light language and learned how to channel. I learned how to become a Reiki master. I learned so much about chakras. <laughs> I learned about toroidal fields. I was like, I do that now constantly. Like I'm always learning new things. And in healing things within myself, I was able to learn how to feel frequencies that are off within myself or off within other people and not just things like shadow work and trauma things but also I learned how to pick up on uh, galactic things and cosmic things and different dimensional frequencies within other people because I started giving sessions to people and I learned how to heal my own inner children and then through healing my inner children I learned how to hear my higher self more clearly so now I can hear people's inner children within them and their higher selves. And then I learned how to access different higher selves within myself from different timelines. And then I learned how to do it within other people because you got to reach those levels within yourself to do it with others. And then I learned how to do timeline healing with different versions and how to call mentors forward for myself from different timelines. And now I do that with other people. And I said, I'm really good at pattern recognition, especially with frequencies and understanding how things web together. And I said, I learned 
learned how to build my own neural networking or rebuild it and then also attach it into the neural networking, if you will, of the Akashic Records. And so I can see how everything uh, coincides with one another. And also working on my self-concept and like remembering who I actually am okay <laughs> outside of this incarnation because your human uh paradigm will be making you forget sometimes and so I'm constantly working on that like staying connected to that more multi-dimensional self of me so after I did that exercise I was like dang like I really have completely revamped my life and I'm a whole different identity like my true identity I was like why am I sitting here doubting myself like that's wild what I've been able to do <laughs> okay. okay this is where we take it <laughs> so now I'm feeling good vibing I'm like yes <laughs> and I go um and lay down on my bed last night and I'm like maybe I'm really undercutting myself right? And I said, I'm going to go and I'm going to look at other practitioners and healers and coaches that are doing similar things as me, okay? Because I know like some of them out there in the etheric field. And so I'm looking through their websites and then I start playing the comparison game. And I'm like, oh, well, this person's doing this and this person's doing that. And they sound it so eloquent the way that they've downloaded what they're able to do and like translate that to people and just spiraling, spiraling out of control. Okay. <laughs> and my higher self came in and she was like, you need to stop right now. <laughs> okay. She's like, why are you comparing yourself to other people in their journey? You don't know anything about them in their life. You have no idea. All you're looking at is a snapshot. They could have been doing this for 10 or 15 years. You don't know what is going on with them. Okay. You need to compare yourself to you like you were doing earlier when we reach outside of ourselves and start comparing that's when things get really a whole hot mess and I was like you know what you're right okay so then I go go to bed and I get up this morning and I get in the shower spiraling again okay just like oh this program all this stuff blah 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 and I was like stop like I came in as a higher self talking to sage right now and I'm like hey you are not being present right now. You are not being present. You are focused so on the past and on the future and you're creating this chaos within yourself for no reason at all. And you're the one that's putting self doubts in your own mind and making it all convoluted. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I'm going to focus on doing my makeup right now. And then I realized I have had this addiction to sensory input. Okay, like either I'm always on social media or I'm um, having new uh, videos about different esoteric topics or I'm listening to podcasts. It's just like all the time. And my higher self was like, well, duh, of course you can't get clear on what you're doing when you always have input coming in. Okay, <laughs> and, she, and I was driving to Panera this morning. <laughs> <laughs> with no phone, nothing going on. And I was just having so many downloads come in because I was just so present. And she was saying, there's only so far you can go with learning outside tools before you need to start creating your own world. And I was like, you know what? That's absolutely right. There's a bigger paradigm that we're all living in, but I'm creating my own world within my communities. And if I'm constantly having all this output from other people and perspectives, it's overlaying on top of my truths and realities. And not saying that we don't always need to like grow and evolve and we can learn from other people, but there's like a precipice point that you hit sometimes where it is getting real muddled up. <laughs> and so I was like, I need to go on an input detox uh, of other people's truths and be uh, beliefs and realities and go in here because the answers are always in here. Always. Yesterday, I was trying to find all these answers outside of me and it was causing a lot of chaos and confusion. This morning, I was like, I'm just going to be present and focus on my makeup. I'm just going to be present, drive into Panera. <laughs> like, and all of a sudden, all these things started coming in. And I was like, yeah, definitely needed that check-in reminder. So <laughs> I would love to hear in the comments if this uh, resonated with you. If you have any questions or any thoughts, I would love to hear them.